welcome to Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Woo! We are here with your sublimation questions. Last Friday of the year. Yes. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is. Last Facebook Live of the year. It's been a every Friday since what May? I think we've done this. Aprilish. April. I want to say. But wow, that's a long time. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> a weekly update, like every every Friday. It's a lot of Fridays. All right. Well, if you have a sublimation printer that you got for the holidays and you have no idea why things are happening the way they're <laughs> happening, that's why we are here today. Uh, to answer any questions you have. So we really want this to be more interactive. You know, definitely post those questions for us. Yes. We are going to help you the best we can and hopefully come up with a solution. If we don't live, we will definitely follow up with you and make sure we get all your questions answered. Um, because let's face it, it's a pretty expensive piece of equipment. Right. There's a lot, a lot of bells and whistles, a lot of moving parts. And why things don't work when you think that they should work we're going to figure it out for you, and we're going to let you know why. Even when you do it exactly at the right time, yes. temperature, <laughs> everything, something may go wrong. Teresa, when we say sublimation printer, we're referring to not only Sawgrass, you know, the virtual, so the Rico, just sublimation printers in general. We focus here more, though, on our virtual, so because it's our trusted product, we work with it and know it's something that we can recommend and guarantee. We have a lot of highs from everywhere. Hi, everywhere. <laughs> Tanya, Susan, Gail. Very nice. So how many of you out there that are watching right now have sublimation equipment? So you can just kind of, you know, throw in some likes in there or just, Raise your you know, virtual hand. Yeah, just like kind of <laughs> let us know. You know, it, it may be something that you don't have the equipment yet but would like to and want to kind of see you know, what it's all involving. We're not really physically pressing anything today, right. but we're definitely going to show you tips and tricks to, to get you to the point of getting a great product every time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so we're good? Yeah, Teresa says she doesn't have one yet, but do we use a heat press with it? It depends on what you're pressing. So in this case, we use mug press or a 3D vacuum press. These little guys, 3D vacuum press heat press, heat press, and those can be in the mug press or the vacuum press. So it really depends on the product. Photo panel. Yes. Okay, so uh, one of the kind of common questions we get um, is, my image appears dull uh, after it's printed. Mm. And one of, the, one of the things that we always suggest, because when an image does appear dull, if you have the item at 400 degrees, then the only other two factors are your pressure and also your time. Mm -hmm. So 400 degrees is your absolute temperature you need for sublimation. That's when the ink is gonna release from the paper and dye the surface of your product. Right. So if you're at 400 degrees and you see that your image is kind of dull, so this is, this is at uh, 400 degrees and I did it for like 20 seconds just so I could really show you the difference. Um, you can kind of see, this is how it initially prints out from your printer. So this itself appears dull. This is not printed enough. And then this is printed perfect. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. Hopefully the camera is really picking that up so you can, you know, see. If you really want to focus on the coconut, you'll see mm -hmm. that that area is really not nearly as dark on this one that it is on this one. So this was a coaster printed at 60 seconds and you have full coverage, full ink. This is what the papers look like. So you can kind of see this paper is kind of tinted a little bit yellowish or kind of burned. You can really see it on like the reverse side. So this is when you know you've, fully released all the ink from the paper. There's no excess um, left over. We're really, really faded. Um, you don't see any kind of, like you see the design, but you don't really see any ink left over. It's just kind of tinting of the paper. Whereas this one, you you really kind of see the ink. Yeah, it looks like, like nothing was taken off. Really. Yeah, like your orange is still right there. Your your brown, especially in the coconut, is really quite obvious. Like this is, this is your original, and then this is your print. So, and then, Whenever you kind of see that there's like blotches of ink and when it sort of looks spotty on your finished product, you can kind of see it here as well. 
like the blotchiness there, that's when you know you don't have enough time or pressure. It really depends on the product. Like this one wasn't enough pressure. Mm. Um, because it was right, when you when you use a mug press, you kind of insert it this way and then close your clamps. And this edge didn't have enough pressure to it. So that's why you got this kind of fading and weirdness just around like where you clamp it. Okay. And we're gonna, we're gonna switch gears to the shot glasses. This is another question that we get. We get these with shot glasses, with cell phone cases, where the edge, the edge of the, the cell phone cases get this like kind of um, white line, but this the shot glass also got these white lines. And what actually happens is when you're folding the paper and put it in your 3D vacuum press, the paper might crease. That crease doesn't allow for the ink to pass from the paper to your product. So when you have that, the design, the design doesn't know what to do. So it skips over that area. So you wanna make sure that whenever you're sublimating and you know placing the paper on the product that it's as flat as possible, the tape is as tight as you can get it. So that way in the case of a 3D vacuum press where it sucks out all the air, that there's no excess paper that kind of squeezes together. That everything is smooth and you know, so that way you have a nice ink coverage. Any questions? I no, feel like I'm just yet. talking. But Laura <laughs> said that she made a super cute shirt with the sublimation sample from the All Things Silhouette. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Yay. Stephanie says, can you do the glass shot glasses in a convection oven? No. You need, um, these shot glasses have a mold that they just kind of sit in, and then the mold connects to the 3D vacuum hose. So when that 3D vacuum press goes on, it sucks out all the air and kind of squishes each shot glass. So without that compression, uh, it won't transfer over. So there's, there's no unit that we have to use in a convection oven because you need that vacuum part of it. No other questions yet. One other thing that uh, we really wanted to mention, um, we do get a couple questions about ghosting. Yeah. Um, a lot of the times it's ghosting on a mug surface. And it might not be ghosting when it's full coverage like this, um, but ghosting can appear when it's just, let's say, black text or you know, you just have text written across your mug, a logo, something that's not full coverage. When the ghosting appears, there's nothing wrong with your, your mug press or your equipment. It is just the last step uh, for the mugs and that's to dip it in warm water. So after your mug comes out of the unit, you unwrap the paper, dip it in the warm water. The warm water helps to stop the sublimation process. So it doesn't let the ink gas out or um, kind of ghost the rest of the white area. Because if you don't stop the sublimation, it doesn't know when to stop. It's so they keep going, which is why yeah. it spreads out like that. So that way, and you might not see the ghosting right away. It might be something that happens like a, an hour later or 15 minutes later. Uh, but if you dunk it in the warm water, definitely warm, not cold, you'll oh, crack. Yep, I'm just getting ready to say that. <laughs> um, but that will stop that process for you and make sure that your mug is going to stay just as crisp as you want it to. I feel like we've actually gotten that question a lot recently, yes. like over, which kind of prompted this, because um, I feel like we do get a lot of a lot of questions on sublimation products and how to make it better. Now, does it have to be warm water, or could it be like the woman I'm troubleshooting with earlier? She says she's only using like tap water; it's not very warm. Well, if you use like tap water, that's kind of like you know. It has a little bit of a chill to it because I know when I run my tap water, it's not, it's not heated up right away or right. it's not warm. So it'll, you'll actually hear like this crackling sound from the mug that you don't want because you're cracking the mug. So it's not going to last as long. Um, you definitely want to use warm, uh, a warm enough temperature that's not 
hot, as hot as the mug because not right. only does it stop the sublimation process, but it also helps to cool your mug down faster because these are pretty hot when they come out yes. of, of the mug press. So, um, you know, cooling it down by using that warm water, stopping the sublimation process, that's going to get your mug to, you know, to be perfect. Okay, Sheila would like to know what advice do we have for selecting a mug press for sublimation? She said, I'm looking to do a variety of sizes, an example, 11 ounce and latte. Go ahead. All right, so I would recommend the uh, the three in one. Was that what you were going to? Okay, just making sure we had to be on the same page. Of course we're on the same page. <laughs> what? So the three in one mug press can do 11 ounce, 15 ounce. You can do latte mugs, water bottles, and they each have uh, separate attachments that all come with it. So there's three total ones. It's very simple to use. You just have to detach and reattach them and good to go. Heating is even throughout, so you can do all those different sizes. Tanya says, do you have a video on how to use the mug press? I don't even know how to connect it to my heat press. Now, our mug presses do not connect to the heat press. They're standalone right. units, unless you're referring to what Actually, Bianca was saying. That mug press right there. Take that paper out. Mm -hmm. Bianca was talking about the different attachments. Those can be changed out and switched out. But if you look under our help section, we do have videos of mm -hmm. us actually sublimating onto mugs or previous Facebook Lives um, that you can see it being used as well. Yeah. So this is our mug press here. Yeah. So right here is where you would disconnect and then attach. So you would unhook this, so just spinning it to the left gets it to, the, to allow you to pull it out, maybe. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just a little plug. And then you'd unscrew the four of these wing nuts or wing bolts, whatever they're called. I'm not, <laughs> not, we're not the set. No. I, am, I am not the person from Home Depot that you <laughs> talk to because um, they would know way more. Um, but you would just like kind of unscrew these. Whoop. That's okay. I meant all to right. do that. Okay. It's all good. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And you can just see how easy that is to just kind of pop out. You just take this one out and, you know, I'll undo those. Take that one out, put the brand new one in, plug it in, and you're ready to go with a latte mug or Very the simple. large tumbler. Um, but there, it's really easy to swap out and, and switch to a new unit. <laughs> Teresa said, I was wondering where the new girl was. <laughs> Jesse, <laughs> <you're behind the laughs> <today. laughs> We got good reviews on the zoom-ins that we've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> like to keep it interactive. Yes. <laughs> Zoom in for you guys. Okay, so D said, what type of coating can we apply on regular items to sub them? There, there is coating out there. It's basically it's polymer coating. That's what you're looking for for uh, when you sublimate. Right. There are downsides to the coating. We have tested it. We've worked with it. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's a little finicky. You have to really take your time with the coating process. Um, a couple coats are required, and they have to be very smooth coats. Um, bubbling could happen, mm -hmm. and if you don't have a nice smooth finish with no bubbles or streaking, um, then your product is going to look like it has streaks or bubbles. Um, so that's something that you really want to keep in mind. If it's something that you absolutely want to take the time to learn, then it could you know, really excel your business because you would be offering products that other people do not offer. Right. But it is a process. So it's something that you really have to kind of take the time and, and learn it. Because in between each coating, you have to wait a certain amount of time. Then you have to, uh, we use the 3D vacuum press to mm -hmm. kind of help us cure the item. Um, and if, if any one of those steps fail, then your end result's gonna fail. So. Un unfortunately, it, it is a bit of a learning curve, I guess is probably the best way to, right. to say it. Because you took a, a lot of time to try yeah. different ones, <laughs> I remember. Sadly, it was a lot of time. <laughs> um, but I was able to press on, you know, get some wood products. Um, I picked up things from like the dollar store mm -hmm. and I just kind of coated them. So like a frame and plates. So I was able to really kind of, you know, expand what we could offer. But it was a process and and not something that we felt totally confident with that we could right. put it out, you know, for everybody and say, oh, use this on anything and it'll work great. Because um, it's it's not, 
it, there's a learning curve. It's not as easy as it may appear. And we don't want to see you struggle or fail or have like money lost or anything no. like that. So, you know, we just... Because I yeah. failed a lot of times. <laughs> Teresa, the polymer coating, it was just a question asked, what can they put on regular items to sub? Um, you want to make sure you're not putting that on after subbing. Your product should be polymer coated before subbing. Mm -hmm. And Sheila says, I own a tea shop. Do you have a source for teacups to be sublimated? Oh, no. Because those are smaller, right? And they're thin, too, they're, or, for the most part. They're smaller, and they're, Delicate. like, different shapes. Yeah. So it's not something that could go in, like, a mug press. Right. Um, and to go in a vacuum press, it would need, like, a special mold. Most of these yeah. products need special molds to be able to suck around it. So um, I'm not sure. I'm not. We're not sure. Right. If there is something on the market like a teacup wrap but they are thinner and more delicate cups so sorry about that yeah but as you can see like you know definitely having you guys kind of see what we've done mm -hmm. you can clearly see like it's not perfect the first time like you're gonna learn from your mistakes and like learn how to figure this out like these were our first round of shot glasses <laughs> they failed <laughs> um but you have to kind of take the time and figure out you know why did it fail? Like, really kind of look at the product and then troubleshoot and figure out, like, all right, well, this is what I got this time. Let me try something different and see what my new results are. And, you know, that's also where we come into play because you could see we fail. Right. Yes. So we figured it out a lot of the times when we fail what our mistakes were. So when you run into that issue and you call us, we'll hopefully, knock on wood, know know what the solution is for you so that way you know we can help you and get you to the product that that you're hoping for right but let's face it you you don't buy the equipment to put it on the shelf and look at it you buy it <laughs> to use it so you know and we wouldn't sell products that we know fail 100 percent of the time right so if you're not getting it to work then just let us know and we'll get you to the point of getting it to work okay chris says any recommendations for sub paper for subbing black shirts Unfortunately, with sublimation, there's just not a way to put that white under base coating because it's right. dying into the fabric. So there's no way to have white on your fabric if it's dark. We have a trick of printing onto glitter, mm -hmm. white vinyl, because the glitter is put in with the polymer coating. Actually, every color glitter, but you're going to have that issue of the colors mixing because it doesn't have that support background. Right. So that's how we get around that. Um, Teresa says, then does everything need polymer coating before it is subbed? Yes. Yes. You have to have a polymer coating, or if you're going on a shirt, 100% polyester if you're using Sublajet. All of our products that we sell online for sublimation have the polymer coating. Right. You don't have to do anything extra. You just buy them. Some may have a, a protective layer. You just peel it yeah. off. Good to go. But everything that we sell has the coating already mm -hmm. yes. which answers katie's question yes she said she just got a dye sublimation printer do we sell blanks yes we sell blanks um a if you go on a sublimation yes. <laughs> all blanks we have a wide variety of products most of them are well not most of them no, no, very this is like a pinky nail yes course. very tiny <laughs> part here they come blank and already polymer coated um tanya jackson says have you ever done two shot glasses at once the mold yep. actually holds what six i want to say eight eight so, <laughs> so there is a mold, and you can put so over there shelf. somewhere, Jesse. I want to say on the bottom, <laughs> bottom shelf. We make it seem like we have this like huge. I know. Episode. We're just in a room. Yeah. <laughs> Midge says she was late, so she looks forward to watching a rerun later today. We appreciate you. Hi, Midge. Midge. Yes. Hi. And you, we, she just missed us last week because we were super short last week. Yeah, yeah we were. <laughs> um. But hi, happy holidays. Cause you, you <laughs> yeah, but Midge, you kind of made it right on time. When you came in, she was just discussing. We didn't do any printing today. We're just showing, like, yeah, so um, the difference much. in... She came in right when you were showing the difference. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. That's pretty much where we really started at. Um, the beginning was just an explanation of it. You don't have to worry about it, Jessica. Yeah. No. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to keep making her struggle. There's, there's, the shot glass molds are on the website. I believe you can fit eight in I the unit. So. But you don't have to print all eight at one time. Right. The other... They, they're just like silicone, so it just kind of sucks up into the unit, and you don't have to worry about those. And Sheila said, how do you judge the quality of a sublimation mug blank? 
you just want to make sure it's polymer coated some people call and say hey do you have like a certain marking underneath and there's a grade there are grade a double a and triple a mm -hmm. i believe triple a is the best um but to be honest as long as there's no chips right it's gonna be it's gonna be fine and as long as there's sublimation ready that's yeah that's half the battle right there yeah there's mainly a few suppliers for everyone and it just depends on who has them because as you notice we've been out of stock of mugs for this last month and we'll be getting them back to bid next month to end of next month so these babies go at all the suppliers i feel like they're so oh, popular you know what another thing i wanted to mention um customers do uh call us with the complaint that oh my when i print it on my t-shirt it's faded it looks mm -hmm. faded your answer to that is well our question is always yes. what fabric are you using if you're using anything other than 100% white polyester with Subliget HD ink, you are going to get the faded appearance. Right. The Subliget HD ink is designed for 100% white polyester. A 50-50 blend will only allow that 50% of polyester to absorb the ink. Right. So it's going to appear faded or distressed or kind of vintage uh, if you're pressing on anything other than 100% poly. So really keep that in mind. The Cell J HD ink is for 100% white polyester and all your hard surface products. Right. Your alternative, if you're like, I only want to do t-shirts. I don't care about the mugs, the shot glasses, the phone cases, the photo panels. Then you're looking at a different ink system. You're mm -hmm. going to be looking for the Chromoblast ink. And that's for the 50-50 blend shirts or the 100% white cotton shirts. So you have two inking systems, right? Subliget, which can do <laughs> all, all of, your hard surface and 100% above. poly, and you have Chromoblast, just fabric, 100% cotton or the 50/50 blend. And you do need two printers if you're doing both. They can't yeah. switch and swap out the inks. And it's I guess that helps to answer Ronnie's question. He said, try to sublimate yellow onto a black t-shirt and the logo would impress, but print it on other colors. So that would be why. If your other colors were lighter color polyesters, then, and you're using Subliget, mm -hmm. you may see something. We recommend 100% white to get your full quality image, right. the best quality. But in all actuality, you could probably go on very light colors as well, yeah. as long as they're 100% polyester, but definitely not dark colors. And as long as your logo is darker than the color shirt you're doing. So, yes, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you can do a light blue, 100% uh, poly shirt and put a royal blue logo on. Right. That would be totally fine. You'll see it. It'll look great. Um, but you can't do yellow logo on a blue because you're going to turn it green. True. So, your garment color is going to affect your, your end result. It just left us. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, She's on the move. <laughs> Jennifer wants to know how do you print on the tumbler bottles i don't know if she meant the sports canteen i was going to get the silicone well oh all right well we can go that's fine um the silicone jesse is in that top one nope oh, sorry. It, the the all white silicone wrap for the 3d vacuum press oh no you're right go back up back up see those yep yep yay <laughs> Ours is very dirty. I have yeah, the worst is. direction ever. <laughs> like if she, you know how they do, um, like when you're blindfolded and you're like, yeah. turn left that now. That so bad. Like, would have been here like Jesse would have been like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so we sell these wonderful things on our website. Ours is a little dirty, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, they're normally clear, not like yeah. that. Not this blue haze that you're no, seeing. So ours are just very used. Um, we obviously, we use these stuff. <laughs> um, okay, you fold it. I like to keep mine intact. I don't like to cut this one because these, these especially are are smaller. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go down here for a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna go downstairs. Robin said her husband banned her from our site because she orders too much. Oh, oh no, that's a good problem. <laughs> Not that he banned you, but yeah, a no. good problem that we're kind of like the Hobby Lobby out there. Yeah, exactly. That everyone, you know, you can't go in um, without coming out with a whole bunch of stuff. So these are 400 milliliters. We we used to sell these, but we no longer do because they're really kind of tiny. Right. And these are the 500 milliliters. So um, the 500 milliliters are are wider and thicker, so they fit in the unit better mm -hmm. than these itty bitty guys. But what you'll do is you'll just take the silicone, fold it in half, place this in here, 
Well, you'll wrap it with your paper. Like, right. this is like the worst little demo. And you're not going to have the lid on it either. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, take a, just take to give you an idea. Right. <laughs> oh, goodness. I feel like <laughs> someone's going to come I thought you were going to be today. I know. Someone's going to come back and be like, well, you had the lid on. I know, and I did it that way. Okay. It did work. You're going to take your tape. Bam. Bam. Okay. Put it in here. Wrap it with this. And then... Paper stuff. Oh okay, God. and then you're gonna take this and put it in your mug press. A little unhinged. Un right Remember, <laughs> this is it. not hinged. <laughs> and you're gonna slide this in, and then clamp it. But this, this silicone is making it, making the the canteen itself thicker. So when you put it in the the heat pr the mug press, it will bring the heat from the heating element. This will conduct the heat for you and make it so that it hits your your um, canteen. Without it, uh, your canteen won't reach the um, won't reach the edges, and so you're never gonna get that coverage. I'm just gonna kind of here's the other one. Twirl it around here. Do you have any other questions while I put this mug yes. back together? Yes. Okay. says, "What is the trick to stubbing on shirts? I have ruined so many with lines. Do you mean?" Oh, compression lines, probably. Yeah, compression lines from you pressing, or are you referring to lines inside of your image? If you could elaborate on that a little bit. Um, I already, I think that what it means, when I, when, oh, wow, I'm Let me failing think. horribly at this. You, go ahead, Bianca. Yeah. Um, and then that's why we, we work together, because, you know, somebody fixes my mistakes and fixes things for me. Okay. Oh, my God. Um, when you are press, like let's say you're gonna press this full eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper on your fabric, compression you, lines. Yes, you are going to get a very um, obvious eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper compression. It's gonna be an indent into your fabric. The way around that, don't don't print all the way to the edge. Rip your edge, so you feather it. I'm the worst at this, so don't don't take what I. <laughs> this is more I'm, for I'm Q and A. Yeah. Um, wow, that was really bad. Don't don't judge <laughs> that. <one. laughs> but this way, you have this kind of feathered effect on the edges, so it's nice and soft. So when you go and press it, it'll just kind of slowly and kind of just have that softer appearance to the edge, and you won't see that thick indentation of your of your indent. You're good. Yay! Thanks, Bianca. Wants to know, can, sure. he switch, can I switch my Sawgrass printer ink from Sublajet to Chromoblast ink in the same printer? You can, but you can only do it once, and you need help from the manufacturer. Once you switch over, you can never switch back. Oh, I didn't do this. That hurts. Chris, we do once sell the latte attachments separately. Uh, oh, I thought you um, It is on our website. If you don't see it, we may just be out of stock, so just shoot us an email at service at proworldink.com to check on that for you. Um, Jennifer says she has the 3D press. Can she print tumblers with that? And we do have the press. tumbler wrap yeah, um, to do that. So there mm -hmm. is a special mold that you would put it in it's to kinda, go on a 3D press. It's kind of like the shot glass one where it has like a little thing that comes out of it. So it hooks up to the vacuum and then it sucks all the air out. <laughs> Miss and girls are so Zoom cute. I love watching you and laughing with you. Don't are work. you showing how to tighten it? Oh, well, this can show how to tighten it as well. Oh, yeah. This, this knob. Um, Deborah wanted to say how to tighten the cup press so it fits cups better. Okay, so I think that this is like opposite. If you, righty, is. righty is Lucy. loosening, <laughs> right, and then yeah. lefty is tight. Because when I was testing me, yesterday, I did it that way. And yeah, yes, Jennifer, lefty we sell is the mold. tighter. Like okay, left yeah. To Lucy, you know? So turning it to the left extends the screw, which makes a tighter fit here. So this is the canteen within the unit. It's nice and tight. Um, without, without this, it doesn't, it doesn't hold at all. And this is as far as it'll go. So you definitely need the silicone sheet. Right. Now, turning it to the right will give you more space. See how it's opening? So that way when you close it, it will fit your mug. So, ooh, perfect. perfect. So just enough pressure. So it's about, you know, that many rungs on the screw for your standard mug. 
but a 15 ounce mug, it's bigger. So you need to increase this more, turn to the right, so that way your screw is less and this opens wider. And then that'll fit your, your 15 ounce. Jennifer, we sell the mold. If you type it in our search bar, the um, tumbler rep, it should come up for you, unless we're out of stock. And mm -hmm. Shizman says, do you sell the all over actually. printing printers and presses? Well, with the 3D backing press, it's designed so you can sublimate majority of all the rounded surface. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to. If it's something else that goes like top to bottom, then we don't have that. Junie says, I use a mouse pad for now. I ordered my green pad waiting for it to come in, but a temp fix mouse pad isn't too bad either. That works. And I think that's it for all the questions. All right. That was very informative. Let's we'll yes. see if there's anything else that we can add. <laughs> Did you want to touch on this or? No, because we, we kind of did. Yeah, we kind of did. So, just to kind of a quick overview. Mm -hmm. Temp is always four hundred. If you find that all the ink isn't releasing from the paper, and then it's sort of like you see a lot more ink than you would like, and you feel like your image is not dark enough or is dull appearing, increase your time mm -hmm. and your pressure if possible. Pressure sometimes might not be possible, right? Um, but definitely increase your time. The longer the length of time, the more it has for the ink to release from the paper and dye your surface. So my number one thing to fix is always, if it's dull or just not enough color, increase the time. Uh, temp's always 400, increase your time. If ghosting appears, you need to stop your sublimation process by dipping your mug into warm water. Not that will, cold. Yes, that will definitely stop the ink from gassing out, they call it, or um, uh, ghosting. Taya, 60, 60 seconds is best only if your item calls for 60 seconds. Right. If you're ordering any type of blank from us, we will have um, directions. directions right there. Sorry. <laughs> we, the owner always likes to text me things while we're on the live. <laughs> he said, great job, ladies. Very informative. But Yay! Anyway. <laughs> yeah, 400 degrees for fabrics as well, but the seconds can change. So you yes. want to make sure you're at whatever amount of sections. But we do have it. Some people stop at the beginning of our product page. They don't realize if you keep scrolling down, we have videos, we have yep. application instructions, and that's almost for every product we have on the website, not just sublimation. And if you're, if you're in the sublimation top category like if you hover over sublimation on the right hand side will be sublimation instructions and application instructions that if you click on that will show you every sublimation product along with the uh, application for that one so it'll tell you how to do mugs how to do canteens photo panels so definitely take a look there um, as well as also underneath the item number yeah yes. and Jennifer chroma blast you are limited um, you do not have to worry about the weeding, but if you're you, you still want to use your laser printer as well for your darker shirts because right. with Chroma Blast you are limited to white or very light colors and cotton and cotton poly blend. So you still want to have that option for darker shirts with your laser printer. And yes, these can all be washed. Mm -hmm. It's dyed into the item. Yes. Um. Well, you wouldn't wash these, but right. But, but you could wash these. Yeah, exactly. Yes. These have been through. I mean, we have our own sublimation stuff at home, and they've been through dishwasher, washing, you're fine. Everything's good. Hey, Sheila said, I joined a bit late. What is a vacuum press used for? Sublimating rounded objects. Yes. Your three-dimensional products, it does really great on the rock slates, mm -hmm. um, but mainly like your mugs, your, your shot glasses. Phone cases. Tumblers, phone cases. We have three-dimensional phone cases that, are, um, that aren't just the back plate. You can do the sides, the edges. Um, so the 3D vacuum press is really good for those as well. Okay, Junie says, is the Epson Workforce 3640 good option for sublimation because he purchased sublimation ink in a continuous system? It's it's just like another option for printers that are out there. It's It doesn't make it better or worse. Um, you know, or I don't think that one is, you know, better or worse than the other. Right. And Epson's just another printing option. Um, we sell the Virtuoso printers, and that's what we've worked with. Um, so that's the one that we have the most experience with. Right. Um, sadly, if you call with you know a question about your Epson, we we might not be able to directly help with what could be going on with the printer itself. Right. Um, but we can give you a couple suggestions as to you know how to get it to work 
properly for you. And Deborah says, my cups, pictures part of it comes out light and part comes out dark in color. Junie said he feels that's a pressure problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and pressure right. and time. So increase, if you're, if you're running your mug at like 240 seconds, just bump it up to like 320. Increase your pressure where possible. Mm -hmm. And you should come out with all the ink releasing and not having any kind of faded little edge to it. And also make sure, it's, it's important when working with, especially like a mug press, put it in, drop it down, push it down to the bottom as you lock it in. Right. Like you, you have to push down because if you just kind of like put it there and then close it, it's not hitting, the bottom is not hitting directly onto the heating element and any area not touching the heating element is not going to transfer to the fullest uh, coverage that it could because it's not directly touching it. Result in air bubbles, missing yeah. ink, just it might not come out as well so, as it should. Push it down and close it, <laughs> and then you're good. Okay, what type of laser printer do you recommend? I know certain ones aren't good, like HP. So, we recommend Oki Data, Canon, Canon Rico, and Xerox. Um, mm -hmm. We do not recommend HP, Brother, or Dell brands because they don't right. work well um, with the paper because their internal temperatures are too hot. With the transfer paper. We right. switch not topics. Not, We're yeah. not talking not about sublimation. It's yeah, that's transfer not for papers. sublimation. That's just for transfer papers for your um, regular color shirts. <laughs> it's like they're started all over again. And I think we're at one now. Okay. Our phones are about to turn on. Yeah, a couple minutes away. I just got here with sublimation on darker shirts. Okay. Um, we'll just, we'll do a quick recap. All right, so. Sublimation on darker shirts. Why do we use that? This instead of Teflon. All right, our, our phone systems are gonna go back on. We, we have to go back to work. Um, but uh, to just kind of do a quick run through, sublimation, the Sublijet HD ink is designed for 100% white polyester shirts and your hard surface products. Your chromoblast ink is designed for 100% cotton shirts and 50-50 blends. Um, also white or light in color. Uh, whenever you have ghosting or um, your ink isn't releasing all, increase your uh, time, mm -hmm. uh, leave your temp at 400, increase your time, and then increase your pressure where possible. Uh, you cannot sublimate onto a dark surface because uh, what's happening when the ink releases from the paper, it's dyeing that product. So if you start on a dark, there's no way for the color to go. Right. It will just dye the dark darker. It won't show your design. So you're totally limited to pressing onto anything dark. You, you just can't do it with some right. You need a white surface, a silver or clear coating, or a gold coating um, on that metal surface, which all of our products are already coated with the polymer coating. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're ready to go. You just order the sublimation products from the website and then uh, press onto your, your products. Um, did I answer them? Yeah. Do we sell <laughs> sublimation paper on a website? Yes, yes, we do. Text print. Junie, you can call us at 1-800-678-8289 or email us at service at proworldinc.com or if you're still on in about one minute, yeah. you can contact us through chat because he said he wants to pick our brains a little bit more. Um, Wes, when a product doesn't have a template, um, the templates are there just to be a helpful tool, but really it's just a matter of measuring your product mm -hmm. and just setting up your own brand new layout with those dimensions and adding a little bit of space for bleed room. And they said thank you for all your help and good afternoon ladies, you do a fabulous job. Awesome. Okay. So if anybody, has, like, just to kind of sum up, definitely if you have questions, yep. email us, uh, chat with us, call us. A lot of the times, it's always best for sublimation that we see what results you're getting. Right. So, you know, if you send us an email, let us know what printer you have, what settings you use, mm -hmm. and a picture of the end result. So that way, we don't email you back and ask you for it. And be <laughs> so, as detailed as possible. Yeah, because like we don't know what you're doing. So let us help you by sending us that picture. That really clears up a right. lot of things and kind of narrows down, you know, to get you the answer faster and, and yeah. easier. Because we always want to help as soon as possible, but we just need all that information first. All right. So we're good? Yes. All right. Thanks, everybody, for Sublimation 101. We appreciate <laughs> you, uh, you know, chiming in with us. And ha everyone have a happy new year.
Happy and New Year. And we'll see you on, well, we won't see you on Tuesday. We'll see you next year. Bye. Bye. See you next year. Bye. Bye. Bye.